all sympathy is is wrong-mindedness or an attempt to yield into temptation and it's it's kind of an interesting topic with the Course in Miracles because it's contrasted with true empathy which is something that Jesus says of all the ideas that he's teaching it could be perhaps the most difficult to grasp because in the human condition, wearing the mask of being a human being, it's seemingly natural and normal to empathize, put yourself in someone else's shoes, oh that's terrible, oh you poor baby, oh I can't believe that happened to you, the, the commiserating uh, with, with what we could say is error, erroneous thinking, and trying to actually give the error away, you know, or join in error. So I would say that false empathy in the most basic core definition is trying to join in error. And true empathy is, is to align with the truth. And practicing true empathy is quite a trip in this world, so to speak, as you go through it, because there's so many temptations. It's like, um, some of you can remember there was that uh, that tuna commercial, Charlie and Charlie's tuna down in the ocean and there's all these hooks that are coming down. And I think of that's how the ego set up this world as a world of temptation with all these little guilt hooks saying, take a bite, <laughs> take a bite. It doesn't matter whether you're talking to your, your mother, your wife, your child, your neighbor, or someone you meet on the street or in a restaurant, in a bar, wherever. It's like the hooks are just coming down and they've got bait <laughs> on them just saying, take a bite. Isn't it a shame? Isn't it too bad? All the, the doubts and the naysayers and everything, the hooks are just coming. Like you're Charlie and you're everywhere, you, your little fins, everywhere you, you turn, there's a bunch of hooks. And to stay in a place of mind where you don't bite the bait, you don't give your mind's power over to to any of those thoughts. You don't try to join. We, we had a great session recently and we were talking about, you know, last night I believe it was, uh, I'm not a body and my mind cannot attack so I cannot be sick. It's great. Then the next day, you know, Lonnie's saying, whoa, I'm really facing all those thoughts about bodies and symptoms and all the conditioning, we'll say a lifetime of conditioning or many lifetimes of conditioning around what sickness is and what to do with it and all this and this. We were getting down to some core, core healing ideas and it just flushed up a lot of stuff. There's, the, there's those hooks again, hooks in the mind. So to be invulnerable, to be joyful, to be happy, to be free, to be peaceful, all the things that we've heard about for centuries, you know, that are, that are the highest qualities to aspire to. You know, Janis Joplin, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Wow, what a state of mind. Nothing left to lose. Wouldn't that be fun? Could you imagine how much fun if you had nothing left to lose? If you had, we'll say, lost the idea of loss. <laughs> You know, where you just felt this joyful fulfillment and there's no loss possible, then that would be freedom. I mean, true freedom, not freedom of the body. I live in a free country, unlike those in prison countries. I live in a free society. Haha. <laughs> you know, we've heard those words, but, but free country is, a, is an oxymoron. It's a contradiction in terms. Free human being is a contradiction of terms. You know, Free society is a contradiction of terms. Freedom of speech, freedom of speech, 
We've got freedom of speech in our Constitution, but what does that even mean? Freedom of speech. Has anybody ever experienced freedom of speech? <laughs> There's a lot of hell that comes with, <laughs> with expressing, you know, look at Abraham Lincoln, look at Martin Luther King, look at Gandhi, you know, look at all the way down, anyone you want throughout the centuries, freedom of speech, you know, it's, it's been, there's hell to pay <laughs> for freedom of speech. You know, everyone who's spoken up and just told, their, you know, Jesus got three years in there, <laughs> and he goes like, kill that guy, you know, we've had enough of that freedom of speech right there, let's put an end to that. So, what we're talking about is coming to true empathy, coming to complete alignment, where there's no sway, there's no compromise, there's no give. It's really what Jesus taught us. He said the, the true freedom is, is really in hearing one voice. You can't have a split mind and be listening to two thought systems, ego and Holy Spirit, that are completely irreconcilable because they're telling you different things. No man can serve two masters and you can't be happy and free if you're listening to two different thought systems. You, you have to relinquish one, you have to relinquish the fear and embrace the love. And to me that, that's really, oh talk about it, that's divine logic. It got me. I'm like, okay, I'm all for true empathy. And also, you do have that, that sense of nothing less to left to lose because when you get into the joy of the Spirit, you get into the identification with the Spirit and the things that seemed important before, like we were hearing here, like pride, Lila was talking about the undoing of pride, undoing of self-concept, all those roles and concepts that we believe to be who we are, those were all ego ideals that we were trying to live up to, to try to be good boys, good girls, good men, good women, good professionals, good family members, good society members, good, good, good concepts. And, and we never could reach that standard. It was like we were chasing a ghost and spinning the wheels and going nowhere. And then at some point all of us start to get on this call to go inward and just start to, like Buddha said, like Jesus said, empty the mind. Happiness peace, love, joy, freedom is emptiness of these egoic concepts. So I know that in the course, that's really late in the, in the chapters, you know, self versus self concept, but, but I really feel all those other chapters were just leading up to the, to the leaping off point of are you ready to let go of all self concept identities in this world and experience yourself as the true self, the Christ self that you are. And I followed all the divine logic and divine metaphysics, but I couldn't just leave it as an intellectual thing. For me, I, I really had to believe I was being called out of the world, out of the thinking of the world.